Welcome back to uh, Mech 1350. All right, we're going to start Chapter 12 here uh, in our FANUC manuals. We're going to go through branching instructions. Okay, so with that, I'm going to break this lecture up into a couple different parts here so that we can be able to uh, do our labs. And there's some labs that we do in the middle of the lecture. So this lecture will be two parts. Uh, so hopefully that'll make it less boring to uh, not quite as long on each part as well. Okay, but what we're going to do is we're going to do unconditional branch instructions. We're going to use data registers. Uh, those are very similar to position registers, only those data registers are going to store literally data and not coordinates uh, of where the robot is. We're going to do conditional branching, all right, and then we're going to get into some guts of uh, some actual programming, some C-based type stuff if we do like if and select instructions or, uh, you know, those sort of things. And we're going to use a wait instruction. Uh, that's going to help us when we're actually having our program interface uh, with some of the IOs. But a lot of this stuff is really going to help and apply to the large robot in the classroom because we're going to do callouts uh, when we do this. Okay, so it'll, it'll apply to that. Now, where is this piece? So remember when we're in the middle of writing our program and we are on the main screen where you can hit point, shift and point, right, or shift and touch up. When we're in that screen, all right, if you hit next, okay, just like we did in the last lecture, we went to the edit commands on the right hand side. On the left hand side, you can see INST, all right, for instructions. So this is where we can insert all of our different instructions that we want to do. So we can insert registers, IOs, which is input and output, our if select statements, our weights, our jump labels, our callouts. And I will explain to you guys what all those mean here. Uh, as we kind of go through those slides. All right, so on the TEACH program, what we consider unconditional branching, okay, it's label, jump label, and call. For us, that helps put the program into a loop. I know that, uh, you know, fundamentally in a C++ class, you know, you don't want to be in an infinite loop, but this can help the program loop as it's waiting for instructions on an assembly line or something like that. Uh, much like the Adreno boards that you guys have been programming, they put things into what we call unconditional branching, which is looping. Okay? Now, we can do conditional branching, which means that we're going to use a Boolean expression. So if this you know, variable equals this, we'll do this task, or if this variable equals this, we'll select this task, or those sort of things, or we'll call certain programs out. So that's really what conditional branching is versus unconditional branching. Uh, we can loop through the program with unconditional, and with conditional we can set it based on input and output uh, parameters or integer parameters as we go through that. So let's take a look at how this breaks down. All right, we have label, which is identified as LBL. So what we want to do is you're going to call this label 1 or label 10. That is significance because we're just going to jump back up through the program. That's all a loop does for us, okay, is a label. So when we start writing a program, we can say label and call it label 1 or label 2 or label 3. That's going to be a reference point in our program for when you do a certain set of executable commands for the program to return back to that point. So if we take a look, uh, through the, the sample code that's sitting on here, right? We go through position one, and then it says jump label two, and then it goes to position two, and then it goes to label two. So what could happen is, what are we really doing? When we hit that jump label two, it's gonna skip that command that says JP1 100% fine. It's gonna skip over that and jump down to label two. So that's what the jump label does, but label two, sets where we're jumping to in the program. So I think you guys will understand that calls and labels are very, very easy uh, jump labels. Okay, so once we've defined a label, then our next command will be a jump label. That tells us to go to the specific label that we made. Okay, so if we take a look at our sample program here, we have if digital input one is off, we're gonna jump to label one. So what's that going to do? Well, it's going to read the digital input one. If it is set to off, well, it's going to go down and it's going to skip the next two lines of code and jump down to where label one is. 
So remember, label is just the position that you're going to. Jump label tells you when to go to that specific position. Okay, if it's not off, it's going to go through the line of code. It's going to go to position one. It's not going to, and then it's going to hit jump label two. So it's going to jump to the end of the program. So there's a couple different jump labels in here, but remember you have to define the label first. That's when it's going to jump around in the program, and then when you want it to go to that specific point in the program, you use the jump label command. So we're going to do a lab where you guys are going to be able to do this. So it's very, very important that we understand the difference between label and jump label and how those kind of interact with one another. The last piece we're going to use, and we use this on the uh, the large robot, is the call program. Okay, the call allows us to call out a specific program that we want when we want to use it. So as long as that program is on the pendant or in the controller and stored, we can call upon that program whenever we want to. So example on the large robot, I have uh, button one, the blue button programmed to call out a specific program that I've made. So I call it like, it, I tell it to call out the test program. And this is how we're gonna run your programs on the large robots. We're gonna go in and you're just gonna edit the call. So it's gonna be your program that you write, but we're gonna call out your program, if that makes sense. So when I push the button on the large robot and it goes through the program and it calls out your program, it's gonna do what you told it to do. So when it finishes executing, it goes back into the main program and waits to be told what to do again. So the call is kind of like in normal programming, you know, a subroutine. So I can go through and, you know, I can program the robot to do a bunch of things and move to a bunch of different locations in the program. And then I can do a call program that does a specific task with the tool or, you know, maybe I want you know, rotate the tool clockwise. So that would be like the call program uh, instead of actually programming the points for it to do that. So you're gonna do a program. Uh, this will be your next lab here. We're gonna get to it here in a second. But you're going to take your programs that you made. You made a box program, a circle program, and a triangle program. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna write a program, your call program, it's gonna look just like this. It's gonna be label one, and then the next thing is gonna say call triangle, then line two will say call box, line uh, three will be, you know, like call circle, and then your next line will be jump label one. So it will constantly loop through this program. It's gonna draw a triangle, okay, box and circle, triangle, box, circle. And it's gonna repeatedly just go through this program. So we've put it in a loop to do these specific tasks. So when you write your lab for this, you're gonna do lab 15 and lab 16, but that's gonna be your main focus, is you're gonna modify a couple of your programs using the branching instructions, all right, unconditional ones, so you're going to use label, jump label, and then in the last program, lab 16, you're, and remember this is going to be in the middle of the chapter as we're doing this, but lab 16, all right, that's going to be just like we went through right here. You're going to write to your call out program, and then you're going to call out your three separate programs within this program. That way you don't have to rewrite them in this program. You can just call them whenever you need to use them. So that's the advantage of using the call instruction as we go through this. So this is the first part of the lecture. We're gonna stop here. You guys are all gonna complete lab 15, lab 16. I'm gonna check you off, and then we'll move on through the next part of the chapter.